Far side making a lot of noise. It's going to be the exact same for this game, I can tell. Yeah, a lot of a lot of noise, especially down lower here where all these students are just collecting. Energy is just building off of each other. The team was loud. The fans were loud. Students were loud. Everybody was just together. And just noise against that Iona team. And I'm looking for the same thing against this Trinity Baptist team. As well. Wildcats in the all-white, trimmed in maroon and gold. Trinity Baptist in the blue, trimmed in yellow and white. Trinity Baptist 2-2 two two on the young season with wins over Beacon College and Crowley's Ridge, but losses to Stetson and Clinton College. They'll play a couple of other big names, Valdosta State out of Division II and Jacksonville and North Florida in December. So the tough stretch of games is not over for Trinity Baptist. Getting you a bit of the environment here at Moore, Jim, as we get ready for tip-off. It's going to be James Henderson who sat out the game against Trinity College with an injury to jump it off. And he'll win the tip. The Wildcats are on the attack with Zion Harmon, the sophomore out of Temple Hills, Maryland, the highest-ranked recruit in BCU history. Had a great season last year. On the baseline, here's one of the newcomers for this platoon Cookman team. Reggie Ward, native of Chicago. And that's probably going to be the modus operandi, uh, Henson. Just get that ball into the post. Yeah, just work on those shorter guards, all these switches that you already can see. Nice backdoor pass and a foul as Zach Chiotti, the native of Jacksonville, is clattered into by Henderson. That foul is actually going to go against Ward. A lot of height in the front court. Ward 6'6". Six, six. Henderson 6'9". We also have Elijah Hulse to bring to bear off the bench, the seven-footer who started last week. Just a lot of height. Yeah, I mean, you can't teach that. It's just one of those things that you got to work against. If you're Trinity, uh, Trinity Baptist, you're just going to be looking to just create space, try to control the tempo here. You can't go into the post with all these tall guys. You're just going to get lost in the trees. And I liked the look from Trinity on that first attack, right? They drew the double team out high, big man rolled to the basket, they found him on a backdoor cut, but the pass was just a little bit too far in front of him to finish. Yeah. I mean, that's a well-worked play from them, especially early in this game. They gotta look to try to keep it close. If they allow Cookman to start rolling, especially with this home crowd, they're not gonna get back. We have a little bit of a stoppage here. The uh, scoreboard is out, no, it's back. <laughs> Three to shoot for the Eagles as they unbound, inbound under the basket that they attack to listeners left. Baptist is close, coached by Nate DeLeon in his first season. Graduated from Albany in 1996. Yeah, that's... Upstate. Upstate New York. And funny enough, one of their assistant coaches, Thierry Smith, was a player on this Trinity Baptist squad last year. That's a nice story, that's a nice story. Nice storyline for them this year to look to build off of their, you know, newer roster. Yeah. And a lot of these players were in this building last year when Trinity played Bethune-Cookman. Kiati going to work down low, kick out to Thompson. Thompson splits a double team and gets a shot rejected by James Henderson. Once again, you just can't go into that post. You just got too many tall guys for them to, be ha for them to handle at the moment. But of course, the game's gonna continue. Henderson only a sophomore this year. One of a couple of standout underclassmen along with Zion Harmon. That pass is tipped and it'll remain Eagles ball. <laughs> the student section want that ball to go to BCU. I, I, I think that the, the referees made the right call there. Definitely a tip, but. Rose to inbound. Floats it over the head of Chiati. His 6-9 frame grabs that ball, and it's a shot clock violation. It was a long possession for the Eagles, but they just couldn't get anything going. They just spent a lot of time trying to work that ball inside, and it just wasn't working. But obviously, that's a part of their game plan is to work it in there. So hopefully for us, they don't figure that out. It's going to be tough to do against the tall forwards of Bethune-Cookman. Here's Zion Harmon gets a screen from Halsey, throws it to the corner. Ward drives baseline, kicks all the way back out to Zion, takes a long three, too strong, and that ball is going to be out of play up into that wire that holds the score, uh, the backboard up. That is out of play. 
one of the little, many quirks of Moore Gymnasium. We saw a more painful quirk in the last game with the center for Iona running into the brick wall behind the, a literal brick wall literal. behind the goal. We are not playing hyperbole here. Xavier Rose kicked out Thompson. He drives and draws the foul. Feet weren't set from Henderson there. No. I mean, that's well-worked play from them. Once again, you just got to, if you're going to work it in there, you got to work it in there fast, quick, and in a hurry. If you let those guys set their feet, they're not going to let you score. Wildcats can't get in foul trouble, and they can't overlook this team. They will run with you, Trinity Baptist. Scored 89, 82, and 90 points in their three in three of their four games. They can score the rock. And there's another foul underneath early on. You don't want Cookman here to get in foul trouble, but obviously that's part of their plan here. They're just coming in, getting off that uh, corner, getting off those kind of screens, and just running straight in there. Trying to put it up, getting fouled consistently, and obviously they get to the line now. This will be DJ Thompson at the line, scoring at 8.7 per in the early going here this season. DJ originally from Valdosta, Georgia, and played his first two college seasons at Tacoa Falls College up in Georgia. They also play at NCCAA Division II level in the same conference as Trinity does. That would be an interesting game for them. 2-1 BCU, 1-2 from the line that time for Thompson. Wildcats back to work on offense. Harmon almost lost the ball. Weaves through traffic. Henderson thought he was going to put that up, but he tried to awesome. throw it behind his hand to Ward. And then Ward gets the interception. Throws it to Hetty. Keeps his feet in bounds. And Reggie Ward can't catch up to the pass. Bit of a frantic energy in the last couple of minutes here. A lot of hustle plays. Nice stab by Bethune Kirkman. Here's Deshaun Dyson roving through to the lane. And it's good. Tough finish. Good finish. A lot of hustle plays in succession there. Just a lot of hard working. Just good defense. Here's Jace Spinelli. Throws the ball up. It's batted into the front court. Bethune Cookman has it. Harmon to the hoop. Plays it in. And a quick timeout for Coach DeLeon and Trinity Baptist as the Wildcats have reeled off six straight points. Unanswered six straight points there. A lot of just hustle plays at the towards the tail end of that sequence. You just keep playing good defense, you're gonna get those easy baskets like we saw. Uh, you even saw a uh, tip ball up court to Cookman players and it just worked well in their favor. Well, 23 steals on Friday night. You can already tell the Wildcats are maybe trying to better that number tonight. They are jumping passing lanes and they've got their hands all up in the faces of the Trinity Baptist players. Lovely defensive just plan and lovely execution here from the team Cookman. Just get in those passing lanes, get in their faces, get those steals and start running down court and good things will happen. If you, just, if you win that turnover battle, you'll often win that game. We've seen Trinity early on in the game pass up threes for driving opportunities. Why do you think that's the game plan coming in if you're facing a team that has the height advantage against you? Well, if you look at the percentages of their three-point shooters, they are not consistent at all. You know, Jaquiz Anderson shooting 33%. You know, a lot of shots going up, but not a lot of consistency. Zachadai is one of their best shooters, but he's only shot five threes. So it's very interesting to see if they're going to try to fix that over the course of the season, get better three-point shooting percentage, or else you have to drive if you can't make those threes consistently. Yeah, and it could be a good night for blocks if Bethune-Cookman can set their feet and maybe take some charges as well. It's just a lot of hard work in defense. People don't often look at those stats, but if you watch games, you'll notice guys who make that defensive impact will always have a place in the league in any sort of basketball affiliation that you play in. Wildcats up 6-1 to one early. Harmon, Dyson, and Ward with the three buckets. Wildcats still a little bit of token pressure with Harmon guarding Spinelli. Xavier Rose, the transfer from Highland Christian. Backdoor cut. And the ball touches the baseline, and it'll be Trinity ball. There's Damani McIntyre into the game for the first time. Damani led the SWAC in steals last season with 64. And he is currently first in the nation in steals this year. So following up an excellent performance from last year with one better this year. Triple team down low. Leaves Chiotti open. He misses the shot. Correction, that's Brandon Hill. 
Harmon backs down Spinelli. Gets a screen, slips past the defender, throws it to the corner. Deshaun Dyson oh, almost keeps, just about keeps that ball in play on the tough pass from Hetty. Dyson drives, floats it, no good. Can't get his own miss. But the Eagles turn Ooh. it over, and then a big block by Jacquez Anderson. A good hustle play out of Dyson, though. He gets the ball back from his own miss after missing the rebound originally, but he tries to put it back up, and, you know, Anderson was not having that. Now Jacquez Anderson, a 6-5 forward out of Aldosta. Wildcats in the corner, off of one leg, no good. Henderson put back off to the left, a third chance for the Cats, and they'll go to the line for the first time. Nice offensive board pressure, Reggie Ward and James Henderson each getting one there. That's what we're gonna look for, especially with all these taller players. You're just gonna keep hitting those boards, even if you're missing shots, if you can just keep putting them back up, you're gonna have a good chance to get into the line and scoring some free points here. Bit slower on the offensive side of the ball in the first opening minutes than against Trinity. Scored 66 points in the first half last week. Maybe we're gonna start slow, speed up this time. Ward drains one and two, seven, one. One-on-one -on -one pressure applied by Dyson. Trying to strip the ball, McIntyre forces Thompson against the backcourt and they turn it over. Harmon to the hoop and he gets the roll. McIntyre with defensive pressure leads to Harmon getting that steal. I think he's coming for his record right now. McIntyre rips another steal away. Cross court pass, Jacoby Hetty can't get that one to go. Another steal this time by Dyson and it's put up and in by Harmon. The Wildcats buzzing around on defense early on. And oh. then Spinelli steps out of bounds. Can't control that cross court pass from Anderson. And we hit the first media timeout. Wildcats fighting their scoring form up 11-1 here at Moore Gymnasium. This is BCU Athletics on the Cadillac Network and 1380 WELE. Basketball season is in full swing. Come catch your Wildcats next Monday for non-conference action as the men's team takes on Charleston Southern at 7 p.m. Admission is free at Moore Gym. Can't make it. Catch all the action live at youtube.com slash Network. 11-1 Wildcats after another Trinity Baptist turnover. Reggie Ward hands to Zion Harmon. McIntyre to a leaping Jacoby Hetty. Yet to see number zero get off the mark. Harmon, step back. That's a smooth play from Zion. Nice shot, just well worked. Once again, very well worked play. Little step back, hesitation, shot that straight in. Another steal by McIntyre. He runs the floor, cross court pass to Kobe Hetty with the big time j -j -j jam. If I could jump like that, I'd try to dunk too. <laughs> I don't think either of us are tall enough to do that. I think combined. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Ian Kennedy. Almost gets it batted away by Ward, but it goes out of bounds. Kennedy, the native of Jacksonville, so playing in his hometown as Trinity Baptist is based in Jacksonville. Close to home. 
Driving deep, drawing the foul is Thompson. Fast hands from McIntyre, but can't avoid the contact. And that's the risk you run, right, being so aggressive trying to rip the ball away. Yeah, I, it, even if you watch, you know, NBA-level players, and they reach in there, try to get those steals, but sometimes you're just going to hit an arm. And if, if you play like that, you're going to run that risk. Wildcats already up to four fouls in the early going. That is one thing that is a little disconcerting. They are up 15-1. Another missed shot for Trinity. Ward kicks to the corner. Pump fake, step back, 4-3. Way too strong. Wildcats and Jacoby Hetty in particular, I think maybe feeling the energy a little bit too much right now. There's no reason to not play fundamental basketball, but Reggie Ward, another steal. He'll go coast to coast and go to the line. Just another, if you're watching this game and you need to like have a high school team or something, then you need to drill defense. Just show them this game, the start of this game for the Bethune-Cookman defense. Just in passing lanes, in people's faces, it just harassing them defensively. And, and it's not just one person, right? It's not just Ward. It's not just McIntyre, even though they are getting the, the stats in the bucket. It's everybody. It's collapsing when players drive. It's at times having five players defensively outside the, the three-point line to trap. We saw this a lot last year, and, and we know Reggie Theas likes to play defense like this. It's just well worked defensively. Like, you can't this is what you do all those practices during the summer for. This is what these long, those long hours are for, and it's to play like this, and they are certainly making Reggie Theus proud. 14-0 run for Bethune-Cookman gives them a 17-1 lead. This is kind of what we saw against Trinity College on Friday. They, they, got, they scored 22 unanswered points before the Tigers got off the mark. It's another McIntyre steal, oh. and this time he throws it behind Hetty in transition. Moving a little bit too fast. He, Tries to get that pass over there, but Hetty was a good couple steps ahead. Yeah, and, and again, when you're getting all these turnovers, it's easy to play fast and loose with the ball. Flying to the hoop, not getting the roll is Rose. It's easy to, to kind of have those turnovers, and you, you can't. you got to keep a level head. Yeah. McIntyre on the baseline. Spin, putting it up is Dondre Watson, the transfer from Daytona State. Kennedy steps into a three and hits it. Nice shot from Kennedy there. Must Second three-pointer made of the season, one for five previously, Ian Kennedy. Must be feeling that Duval presence in the arena. And I guess playing this game so close to home, Zion Harmon slips, steps on the baseline and turns the ball over, but there's, we saw Trinity College have a couple of players based out of the Daytona Beach area, so they had some fans in the crowd. You, you, you saw a couple of blue shirts here, and, you know, supporting family members and, and others that are playing at Trinity Baptist. So it's, it's not that far flung of a road game for the Eagles. Cross court, Kennedy almost went two for two that time. Trust his shot a lot. Trying that three-pointer now more instead of pressuring it in as much. Here's Seneca Willoughby, another one of those new players for Bethune-Cookman this year. Where's number three, the transfer from Contra Costa College out in California. He'll pull up for a mid-range jump shot. That's too strong. It's four C's right there. Jeez. <laughs> Wildcats have gone a little bit cold from the field in the last couple of minutes. Baptist will keep it off the tap for McIntyre. You gotta, you gotta wonder, like, Reggie Theus must be happy about the defensive performance, but offensively, even though they're up by a sizable amount, you just gotta think, come on, you gotta score some more points, you gotta be more consistent with the ball, yeah. especially when you're just moving, the, you're getting these turnovers, and you're just not capitalizing. Well, they've only, they have turned the ball over themselves four times in the early going here. Rose. Nice job by Dyson to fight through the screeners. Gavin Korth Loader throws a pass that's too strong for Hill, and the Wildcats turn it over again. And a two-hand throwdown from Dondre. <laughs> we had somebody on the floor to try and wipe up the, the sweat off the floor, but the referees didn't stop the game. <laughs> that poor student almost got run over. It's a great way to get hurt. Look out. 
But another great defensive play, just hustling for that ball a lot, loose ball, jumping for it, everybody on the team actively working to get the ball back. And then an unselfish play to just pass it over, get a little dunk, little assist for your stats. Yeah. 19 to four. Hill drives, spins, draws the reach in, much to the chagrin of the more Jim crowd. That's McIntyre's second foul here in this first half. And as much as Damani loves to steal the ball, he does get a lot of personal fouls called against him. I mean, once again, that's the, run, the risk you run taking. You're just always in there trying to get those steals. You're going to hit somebody's arm. You're going to do something. Especially if teams know that you're going to try to do that, they're going to work against you. So, Damani. Excuse me, Damani's going to come out and Reggie Ward comes back in. That's a big height swap. Damani's 6'4". Um, Reggie Ward 6'6", six, six. and another reach-in foul called against Bethune-Cookman, this time against Seneca Willoughby. Refs are really on top of the game tonight with these reach-in fouls. I mean, well, it, And I think if you're Bethune-Cookman, you've made your point, right? You've got 11 turnovers, 12 turnovers now in the early going, uh, 10 of those steals. You can back off a little bit and just play fundamental defense. Nice job by Watson to break on that pass and bat it out of bounds. Speaking of fundamental defense, he just cut in that passing lane and tried to slap that ball down. Course Loader, the sophomore from Spring Hill. Hill all the way back out on top. Nine to shoot behind the back dribble from Rose. Throws it underneath. Hill lost it out of bounds. Wildcat ball. That'll be immediate timeout. Wildcats up 19 to four, but have only hit one of their last four shots. They'll try to get better efficiency on offense when we come back. This is BCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network. Florida's largest HBCU football game is back on November 18th. Come catch the Wildcats as they take on the Florida a and Rattlers in the 43rd annual Florida Blue Florida Classic at Camping World Stadium in Orlando. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Back here at Moore Gymnasium, second of back-to-back -back games against teams from the NCCAA for Bethune-Cookman. Watson battling down low, and he'll draw the reach in against... Kennedy, so the reach in fouls go both ways for these teams early on. Referees calling a really tight ball game early. If you look at a uh, good, re uh, good call for the ref, by the way, but if you look at Kennedy and uh, who's that? Fernandez, two very short guards, a very small ball lineup that they have out here. And if you're Cookman, you definitely will look to take advantage of that. Fernandez is one that can score the rock. I've got a, I've got a cool story about Diego Fernandez. I'll, Bring up if we have some time. There's a three, too short. The Eagles box out, but the long rebound comes to the Wildcats. Battling through contact and losing the ball is Willoughby. Here is Fernandez. Underneath it goes, a spinning, twisting layup from F Figuero is no good. They, Figuero is one of the top scorers on this team. The transfer from Monroe College and a native of Puerto Rico. There's a three that goes down for Jacoby Hetty, ending an over two minute scoring drought. Teddy's going to look to try to... Oh, he went out of bounds on Kennedy there. 
but Hetty is going to look to try to score some more points. It's great that he stopped the scoring slump because he stopped his own scoring slump after not being yep. not hitting any shots for a while there. Hetty, 17 and a half points a game, only a two-game sample size, but he he is just a three-level scorer in the paint, mid-range, and from three can do it all. That's what you got to be in today's modern game. And a junior college guy as well from Wabash Valley. Nice ball movement by BCU and the putback dunk by Watson. Once again, taking an advantage of that height disadvantage for Trinity Baptist. Here's Zach Chiotti as the Eagles are rotating their entire lineup in and out. Fernandez dribbles left and right and coughs the ball up. In transition, Willoughby, jump pass to the corner, setting his feet, firing a three, and hitting! It's Jacoby Hetty with back-to-back -back triples. He ties Zion Harmon for the scoring lead with eight points. Drive spin, and getting it to go is Figuero. Pretty shot from Figuero. First score for a while, and a while for Trinity Baptist. But first, you, first score in three minutes and 34 seconds. That's a long time, especially when you're playing fast and loose like Cookman has. It hasn't been a very dry uh, possession cent uh, center. Hetty game. at the elbow backs up into a three. <laughs> That's a little bit much. A little heat check, I guess. Quick back the other way. The Wildcats didn't get set defensively, and they're punished by Zach Chiotti, the 5'9 guard out of Jacksonville. Two Jacksonville natives on this team. Dyson thought about the three, passes it to Willoughby. Low post, again, good ball movement. Dyson open for three, short, offensive put back is good by Seneca. And as you talked about in the open, Henson, Wildcats just crashing that offensive glass. Up to seven offensive rebounds now in the first half. And if you let a team just get offensive rebounds, you're not going to win. I mean, you let them keep possession, you let them recycle. You're, they're going to eventually put that ball in the basket or get fouled or something. So you got to get those defensive rebounds, especially on those poor, sh the poor shot selection we've seen from Bethune, especially yeah. earlier on. So not taking advantage of that is part of the reason why Trinity is down by 21. And the one thing that Bethune Cookman has to be wary of is the foul trouble. They've already put Trinity Baptist in the single bonus with 8.55 to go. They'll shoot at least a one and one from here on out the end of the end of the half. All right, so question for you. Do you prefer women's basketball with four quarters and a, just one bonus at five, or men's basketball with two halves and a single bonus at seven and double bonus at 10? I prefer college basketball just because there's a lot more shenanigans that go on towards the tail end of games. You just get a lot more action, a lot more fouls, a lot more free, just a lot more clutch moments that are allowed to happen, even though I do enjoy watching women's basketball. And, oh, that was a wayward pass that almost got intercepted by Chiotti. And, right, it puts more pressure on free throw shooters when you're shooting an and one late in the game as opposed to two shots. Yeah. Henderson, nice skip pass underneath the basket, but Hetty couldn't get the roll. He almost put it back in there first. That was Korth Loader with the rebound. To the wing, stepping in, and it's a turnover. Zion coast to coast with the lay-in. They try to be too fancy with the ball movement. They had an open look, didn't take it, and tried to make one extra pass, and it just got stolen by Harmon. Fernandez gets by one. Kicks to the corner, Koth Loader for three, no. It's not that Trinity Baptist aren't getting good looks. He's simply not capitalizing on them. Harmon drives behind the back, kick to Hetty. Dyson just takes a wing three and is too strong on it. And then there, with they had about 15 seconds left on the shot clock, they could have used the shot clock more. Yeah. Nice individual play, hoop and the harm for Xavier Rose. I mean, if you're gonna, if you want this team to get back into this game, you gotta sometimes just say, I'm gonna do it, coach. Take that layup, take that strong foul, and at least get to the line. He'll go to the line for an and one when we come back. This is BCU Basketball on the Count on Network. Cats up 31-12 here in the first.
Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Xavier Rose, the junior in equipment, Georgia, is at the line for an and one. He got a nice running layup to go before the media timeout. Strong on the and one. The ball is tapped back to the Wildcats as Seneca Willoughby takes it. The Philadelphia, Pennsylvania native. He's crossed the country from Philadelphia to California to Florida. Unfortunately, that shot is short. And the shortest guy on the floor, Zach Chianti, grabs the board. And he gets the shot rejected off the backboard. Dontre Watson take a bow. Stepping into a three, too short for Jacoby Hetty. That's what that height difference is going to do. A great drive from him, but he just couldn't, didn't have that finish fast enough. And when you got a guy who's like 6'8 behind you, it's kind of hard to finish. And a lot of the play right now from Trinity Baptist, they've gotten away from some of that passing we saw in the early game. Fernandez can't get a wild layup to go. And they just kind of go one-on-one -on -one and play iso ball. A lot of iso ball. However, they're driving into the rest of Cookman and not kicking that ball out. So they're just sitting there waiting for him to drive in and not scoring. Back to the basket, Watson, that's a tough shot on the baseline. Trinity pass out in transition to the trailing Fernandez for a catch and shoot triple, no good. And then a foul is gonna be called on Chiotti as he pulled the jersey of Dyson. That was a much better scoring opportunity for Trinity Baptist. They passed it out, they drove, saw an open man, passed it out and just didn't convert on that shot. I'm a little surprised that uh, Oramis Figueroa did not try and drive all the way to the basket and, and, and make the layup there. He might be, I mean, you see all those tall guys, especially after your teammate just got rejected at the, at the basket. So you might be more scared and wary, and you're probably thinking we're down by a lot. Let's try to get this three, let's try to get rolling. So maybe he was in his head, I don't know, but he tried to pass it out. It was a good look, but just couldn't convert. These two games for Bethune-Cookman against Trinity College and Trinity Baptist are, are what I like to call momentum games, confidence games. You, you out-physical the opponent, you've got the intangibles, the height, the speed, you can kind of muscle your way through, but it's also a chance to play good fundamental basketball and really get those uh, pr get those best practices down before you play teams like Lamar, like Delaware State, like Longwood as they go on the road the next two weeks. You want to get those, get that like struggling and losing. And you want to get that all out the way now. Get all the glowing games out when you're playing Trinity College and Trinity Baptist. Even that game against Minnesota was a good uh, test, litmus test to how far they've come. Willoughby tried to split two defenders. Nice recovery by the blue jerseys, Dyson tried to squeeze that one through a tight window, ball loose on the ground, Zion Harmon fast hands to rip it away, Deshaun Dyson in the corner, switch. Well worked play, once again, just, Cookman is just simply out hustling Trinity Baptist down this stretch. And nobody, oh look out, Jacoby Hetty says, you don't get to make a point, I'm throwing down another jam. <laughs> He cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> but he proved my point still, so. They're gonna get Harmon for a foul. It's gonna be a one and one for Keani. They've been sent to the line, not as much as you'd expect with the amount of fouls that you've seen, but the three for five, hopefully for Keani's sake, they can get that percentage back up a little bit. Wildcats out rebounding Trinity Baptist 16 12, but 6-1 on the offensive glass with three second chance points and a front end of the one and one is missed by Zach Chiotti. One of the most painful things you can do in the game of basketball is miss the front end of a one and one. Especially how he missed it, hit it off the front of the rim. He didn't even hit the backboard or anything. Open for three was Hetty, he didn't take it. Zion Harmon will though, too strong. Hetty battles for the board and puts it up and in. Now Trinity Baptist is trying to work faster, especially when you're down by this much, it makes a lot of sense, but it's not really working in their favor here. Oh, Fernandez, money from the free throw line jumper. Wildcats still working quickly. 
I'm not sure that was intended to be a pass from Zion Harmon. It still finds its way to Deshaun Dyson. Floater in the lane, hangs on the rim and falls. Maybe he's seeing uh, the ghost of Shaq out there or something because he just <laughs> threw that one up. 40-14 here in the first half. Fernandez back to court loader and the story about Diego Fernandez is I actually called Diego Fernandez's games back when he was at Satellite Beach High School down in Brevard County. So it's, it's kind of cool to see him progress behind the head pass. And it's put down by Watson. Sports Center top 10 play possibly there. I mean, that's one of those things where you get out of your seat, get the crowd amped, even when you're winning by this much. Zion Harmon pulling out the trickery. Halloween is over, Zion. <laughs> Not for him, though. Now we're seeing a slow down possession. Long skip pass. Fernandez open for three. Money. Diego Fernandez only hit one three in the first four games. He's hit two already tonight. He, he's showing out for you. <laughs> Extra pass. Three on the way. Good from... Deshaun Dyson, who had probably the moment of the year last year for this BCU basketball team, had that game winner against Alabama State at the buzzer. Another three is swished by Trinity Baptist, and all of a sudden, a three-point shooting contest is broken out here at Moore Gymnasium. I mean, when you're up by 25, you kind of go, hey, let's try some stuff. But you know, at the same time, you got to still be trying to put defensive pressure on, allowing all these threes is certainly not going to... Dyson steps into another catch-and-shoot, too short. Maybe the contest is Long over. Long pass. Fernandez doesn't go all the way to the lane. Good back, track back by Dyson. Fernandez takes a wide open three though, and he knocks it down. Timeout, Bethune Cookman. Three straight threes for Trinity. Two from Fernandez, who is giving me more credence for that. He's showing out for you, because all of a sudden, after that story, he's decided to become prime Ray Allen and just started banging threes. Trinity Baptist has scored the last six points, and if not, here come the Eagles. Well, they're finally in the game. It's been a little, I mean, it's been a while since we've really had a close game. It hasn't really been close since the start, but at least in minute splits, you can make the argument that the game is close. Yeah, and I'm, we can't really divide by quarter like you can for the women's games, but again, in the last two minutes or so, it's been all Trinity. Yeah. So, and I, so if you're Coach Theus right now, you're in the huddle, you're up big, you're up by 19. What are you saying to, to the guys? Well, <laughs> Coach Theus is definitely being annoyed at that. The truth, I mean, you got to, at a certain point, it's like, okay, we game plan for the threes, we allow them to shoot those threes, but you got to close down on those shots more. We got to start turning the ball over. We got to take more time with our possessions. I know we're up. I know we're scoring fast. I know we're scoring loose. But let's slow it down, let's play some fundamental basketball, and let's get out of here with a win. Yeah, just because the score is lopsided doesn't mean you can't hustle. And I think we might see some lineup changes out of this timeout for the Maroon and Gold. I would be very surprised if we keep the same lineup as that we've had. Not in the sense of that they've been playing badly, it's just that this is a perfect opportunity to let guys show what they have. Yeah, and I, I'd love to see some players like the freshman Mason Dorsey get in. Simeon, excuse me, Simeon Womack, Jason Matthews, guys that don't really play a lot. This is their chance to shine as I say that Mason Dorsey checks into the game. The freshman from LA. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Play all the way across the country. Can't really go much farther than that. I wonder if Willoughby and him have conversations about Cali sometimes. Probably. It is Dorsey on the ball now. Dyson in the corner. Step back three. Escape dribble. Front iron no good. Good look. Just can't convert that three. Korth loader hands to Chiotti. It's still a 6-0 scoring run. Making an 8-0 scoring run for Trinity Baptist as Zach Chiotti flashes to the basket. And they're closing it down to a closer game. But Dorsey kick out. Harmon a three. Good. Right back into that gap that they were in. The Wildcats shot 43 pointers on Friday. They've already shot 15. And responding in kind is Zach Chiotti again. Zach Chiotti's having a day. Even though they're down by a sizable portion, 
He's working hard. It's the Chiati and Fernandez show. Zion Harmon off the mark. And you would think with those shorter guards, you would think this height difference would really affect them, but they're obviously getting looks against space. Fernandez kick out into the corner for Gavin Korthloader. Fernandez looking for a screen, won't get it. Does create some space to whip the ball around to Rose. Who hits a three? A little iso ball from Fernandez and he gets that kick out leading to that open three. After starting one for three from the on the arc, as a little up and under is good from Zion, um, they are now six for 10. 60% from three for Trinity Baptist. I mean, even though you're down by a lot, you gotta take, there's always positives to take from games. That is certainly not one. At that time, Fernandez dribbles it off his foot and turns it over. Anderson checks back in for the Eagles. Maybe you just wanted to take a break, but obviously those three, that getting that high three-point percentage, you take that any day. Six yeah. out of ten is pretty good. Chiotti up to 12 points to lead his team. Fernandez with eight. Just a minute to go in the first half. Wildcats 50 to 31 leaders here. Nice shot fake or pass fake by Dorsey. Behind the head pass and it's finished off by Watson. A lot of pretty, just pretty passing really from Cookman, especially when they start moving the ball properly. They do pull out these little behind the backs, these the stuff you see on those YouTube TikTok compilations. That was the first assist of the college career of Mason Dorsey. And you hope to see many more from him. Dyson gets the contact and the foul out high against Giotti, but the Wildcats still nowhere near the bonus. Only five fouls against Trinity Baptist in this first half. I mean, you keep driving, you're going to get some more fouls, you're going to get some more reaches. So, I mean, if they keep that going, they're definitely going to look to get more fouls. But they've been shooting mostly from beyond the arc, are quick shots, pass shots passing the shots, catch and shoot opportunities. So they're not getting that ball movement and penetrating into the paint as much as you maybe like to see. With 18 Titans. turnovers for Trinity Baptist, 14 of those steals by Bethune Cookman. Hetty and Watson play a little two-man game. Woohoo! Mason Dorsey. Have a debut. <laughs> that's that's taking hoop in the harm to a whole nother level. That's that's a whole lot of harm for a little bit of hoop right there. Dropped like a sack of potatoes into that foul and still scored that point. So. As you see, Brandon Hill attempt to check into the game. That's something that has changed this year. You cannot check in in between free throws. I actually did not know that. Yeah, well, it was, it, was, it was actually a change last last year to keep more rhythm in the game because a lot of coaches would kind of try to disrupt the free throw shooter's rhythm by substituting in the middle of a two-shot penalty. Wild rebound off the miss. Dorsey collects in the corner. Dyson skips past his defender. Extra pass to the wing. Zion Harmon short. And Trinity gets the rebound. 13 seconds to go in the half. Can Trinity close strong? Rose rifles it into the paint. Picked off by Hetty. Five seconds left. Dorsey, spin around, leaves it. And a foul. And with 1.6, the Wildcats will go to the line. BC a little lucky there as they try to get a little bit too cute in transition. A lot of passes there. I mean, one or two that probably weren't needed. But Mason Dorsey, once again, really had a good debut after he came on. He's been everywhere, really, in these last couple of plays. So you'd look to see if Diaz is going to leave him in for that second half, especially at, if he's playing well. Dondre Watson hits the first free throw. Wildcats aren't going to get to the 66-point scoring barrage they had against Trinity College in the first half. They're going to get pretty close, though, as they're at 56 Only with 1.6 to go. Long pass slash shot. No good, and that's the end of the first half. Henson, thoughts on the first period here? So, Cookman got out to an early, just early, a lot of domination, a lot of steals, a lot of just pressure put on that Trinity Baptist team. And if you were watching that, watching that towards the beginning, you were definitely seeing just Cookman hustling, just playing hard, good, old-fashioned basketball. But as the half progressed, Cookman seemed to let off the gas after not starting super fast scoring-wise. 
and allowed Trinity Baptist to get a lot of consistent threes. Their shooting percentage got up. Now they're shooting six for 11 with another missed three opportunity there. But you would say Cookman has been playing extremely well. However, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Trinity Baptist has some things that they can talk about in that locker room uh, that would be positive. Nate De DeLeon's definitely going to talk about good three-point shooting towards that second end. But overall, not a good day at the office for them. Well, it's a little sloppy, right? For both teams, you can see that by the number of combined turnovers. 24 turnovers in the first half. 19 of those by Trinity Baptist. Here are your first half scoring totals as BCU ends on an eight nothing run to take a 56-31 lead into the break. Zach Yachty has 12 points. Fernandez eight, Rose five, Kennedy three, Figueroa two, and Thompson one. And for Bethune Cookman, Zion Harmon, 15 points on seven of 12, shooting one for five from beyond the arc. Jacoby Hetty, 12, Deshaun Dyson, 10, and DeAndre Watson, 10. Four players in double figures in the first half. And uh, Jacoby Hetty racing towards a double-double with five rebounds. Ward has three points. Dorsey, Willoughby, and McIntyre has two. Henderson, the only player that has seen the floor but not scored. And, of course, Henderson coming off an injury hasn't seen many minutes. Yeah. Henderson's probably looking at the, the, this is definitely looking at him to just get back into the swing of things. Hey, we're up by a lot. We're playing really well. Don't go out there and do something stupid. Get yourself re-injured or re-hurt. Just get back in your swing. Uh, the swing of things, really. Expect to see a lot of players that we haven't seen yet for Bethune-Cookman in the second half. I'm talking about a Jason Matthews. I'm talking about a uh, maybe a DJ Carter Hollinger, Elijah Hulse, Yusuf Tamara, Keontae Williams, guys that are rotation players, quote-unquote. Expect them to get some minutes tonight. Yeah. We will go to the halftime break. We're back in about 10 minutes for the second half. You're listening to Bethune-Cookman University of Basketball on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to Moon Gymnasium here on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University. It's the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats 56, the Trinity Baptist Eagles 31 at the start of the second half. Michael Toretto, Henson White up at the broadcast booth with you here for this Wednesday night doubleheader. Women's team got it done in overtime. Men's team likely will not need overtime to get their second consecutive win. Unless something absolutely absurd happens, it should be a very cut and dry second half for Cookman. Uh, the women's game, however, was a uh, barn burn. Yeah. I mean, it, we have the stream up still. If you want to go back and watch that, if you got to, it, extremely yeah. just interesting. Fourth quarter, overtime, absolute theater in college basketball. Do it. Do yourself a favor if you weren't here for that one and go back and watch the end of that game. Let's get you some first half team stats from the first half. Bethune Cookman out rebounded Trinity 21 16, closer than you think it might have been based on the score, but they did out rebound them on the offensive glass 8 to 1. Nine assists to three from ECU. Trinity turned the ball over 19 times. BCU just five. BCU two blocks. Trinity one block. Fast break, 21 to four. BCU loves to get out and run, especially when they get 15 steals to Trinity's three. 15 steals is an absurd amount for people, especially people who don't play basketball or don't watch basketball that much. That's a video game stat for a first half, especially at really any level. If you're getting 15 steals, you're doing something right. You're in passing lanes. You're just disturbing the peace generally. Trinity Baptist, the fact that they've been able to score 31 points while giving up that many turnovers is a solid testament to their still tenacity and willingness to try to keep fighting, even though... If you've been watching this game, you know that the odds have not been in their favor. And you remember on Friday, the Wildcats broke the franchise, our school record, I should say, for steals in a game with 23. They're on pace to break it tonight if they continue at the pace they're currently at. I mean, that's Sec Second half underway, Trinity in the blue and yellow. They go left to right, Wildcats in the white. Trimmed in maroon and gold. Back-to-back -back record breaks would be an interesting day. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh we got a brick. <laughs> first thing, first shot out of the halftime break. We got a brick. <laughs> Haven't seen that here all season yet. First time for everything. Wildcats will throw the same starting five out there. Hetty, Harmon, Henderson, Dyson, and Ward. And Coach Theus calls a very early timeout. Maybe he put the he put that starting lineup out there by accident. I mean, well, normally you have to declare your starting lineup to the scores table before the start of the second half, and most teams just go same lineup. So I wonder if this was the plan to immediately call timeout and change it up. I mean, that works out for them to get a little see a little of what they're trying to do for the second half and get the shift for that. But I mean, same time, it's like. Okay, coach, you put me out here, and then you immediately call the timeout. You got to feel a little bit confused, but hey, you got your coach, coach, and you play. Make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop you want to wear your bcu gear and you want to get out to more gymnasium on monday night we'll be through equipment against charleston southern another non-conference home game yeah that'll be a really good game charleston southern uh, i think they were in march madness last year if they I'm were not mistaken and i mean i have friends from charleston who are going to come out to try to see that game but obviously, you know, Cookman's going to look to continue their winning ways if they, things keep up as they've been going in that game. Then the, they're going to go on the road for a while. Yeah, the next two home games, Charleston Southern on Monday and then the 1st of December against Incarnate Word are back ends of home and home. They went both at Charleston Southern and Incarnate Word last year. Drop both of those contests, so they'll be looking for a little bit of revenge here over the next two weeks. Sandwich in between that, a trip to Longwood to play Lamar. Delaware State and the hometown Longwood Lancers in a three-team MTE. So, if you're local and you want to watch some good basketball, there's plenty coming up at the Ocean Center this week. Sunshine Slam, Florida State is in that along with Stetson for local talent.
Ward, baseline drive. Nice athletic contortion to the body and the harm. And he'll go to the line. That was a good finish, good solid finish. Through contact, continued this shot. Didn't let him mess it up too much. Made that. Now he's going to try to get this one here. Yeah, Reggie Ward up to seven points. A foul, it looks and like. Foul on BCU. Pushing the back. Trinity ball. That's, that's the one thing that Bethune-Cookman really didn't do very well in the first half. They fouled a lot, up to nine personal fouls. Thankfully, nobody with more than two. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they're spreading everything. Oh, oh. alley-oop attempt. It's finished off on the second opportunity by DJ Thompson. Almost a double alley-oop there because he passed it to himself after getting the original alley you passed by missing the first time. but Dyson from the skip pass from Harmon. Trying to find the first three-pointer of the second half. And James Henderson will be infringed upon by Anderson as he goes over the back. I mean, once again, if you play hard, you're going to get fouled. So obviously you're going to be looking for high, heavy fouls against you and your teammates, but... Obviously, Cookman hasn't been affected by that very much. Dondre Watson, freshly into the game, receives the inbounds pass. Harmon looking for the double screen into the corner. Heady catch and shoot, swish. And when he gets going, he's automatic from over there. So yeah. you got to try to close down or do something to stop that. Third three of the night for Hetty. And Trinity Baptist had a real hot streak in the middle of that first half where they hit three straight threes and connected on four or five threes. That time they turned the ball over. It'll still be Wildcat ball kicked out by Anderson. That's, that halftime has not been good for uh, Trinity Baptist, at least to start off this half. They were, they were hooping at the end of the half, but now they seem to have been slowed down and going back to how they were at the beginning of the game where they could not, they barely scored a point. 13-2 Bethune-Cookman run as Trinity Baptist gets only their fourth steal of the night and coast to coast goes Thompson for the layup. He Extremely. scored all four points for Trinity in the second half. Extremely solid finish from him. Trinity has a lot of individual performers that seem to be carrying them scoring wise where they'll have a guy go on a little torrid run but nice job by Harmon stutter step behind the back can't get the finish wrestling for the ball underneath the basket jump ball is called I believe Trinity has the possession arrow and they do but as I was saying just not really a team effort from Trinity Baptist. It's like one guy will score all of their points and then that guy will get cold and then somebody else will try to play a lot of iso ball, a lot of fast break opportunities. And if that guy isn't working, well, they just can't score. And the two guys that have led them in scoring, Zach Yadi and Diego Fernandez, not on the floor right now. Here's a three from the left-hand corner, way short by Spinelli. You got to wonder if maybe their coach is trying to rest them up. They played a lot in that first half, to be fair to him. Reach in foul against Spinelli as Zion Harmon tried to weave through traffic. Harmon, shorter, listed at 6 0, really like 5 10. <laughs> you give him a couple extra inches in, the, in any basketball league, yeah. everyone is a couple inches taller than they really are, unless you're trying to be funny and you want to go shorter. But 90% of the time, like some Muggsy Bogues esque 5 4 playing in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let those, the short guys fool you. Sometimes they got a lot in them. As we saw from Chiotti, who's 5'9". Yeah. Nice no-look pass. Heady catch and shoot. It's good. He's got one from the left-hand corner and now one from the right-hand corner. Little three-point shooting contest. He's going to go top the key next. Yeah. Trying out for the NBA All-Star game. Floater from Spinelli too strong. Wildcats in transition. Ward draws a double team. Open man is Harmon. One-hand pass. Underneath, Dondre Watson powers through. Oh. And another turnover by the Eagles off the inbounds pass. Dyson, catch and shoot, rims out. Long pass ahead, it's accurate. Oh. And a throwdown is no good from Jacquez Anderson. That's gotta be one of the worst feelings in basketball right there. Ward will go to the line. 
as Spinelli fouls it on the way in. End to end basketball with the Wildcats coming out on top. 17 to four run over the last five minutes. 17 to four, and you just saw easy opportunity. He tries to go for the dunk, he misses it completely, ending up with Ward getting back across and just, you know, getting a solid and one here. You go from one of the worst feelings in basketball, missing a dunk, to a tough and one, one of the best. So, Taylor two quarters, Taylor two halves, really. The Wildcats 0 for 2 from the free throw line here in this third quarter. Diego Fernandez is into the game for Trinity Baptist. Here's Xavier Rose behind the back and up and under. A lot of tough finishes we've been seeing from both teams. Harmon just steps into a three, no good. Wildcats 30% from beyond the arc tonight, 6 of 20. Here's Zach Chiotti. He was the danger man for Trinity, and that's going to be a goal 10. Goal 10. Can't do that nah. after it already hits the backboard as we go to the first media timeout of half number two. Wildcats with a strong start. Looking to continue it up 67-37 here at Moore Gym. This is Bethune-Cookman Basketball on the Cat Eye Network. Stay up to date with everything Bethune-Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. A good way to keep up with the program if you can't watch the games or be here at the gym. And if you want to help the students as well, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of interns and student interns work on those graphics and stuff. So by, you know, interacting, you're actually helping them as well. Eddie, double team, can't move that pivot foot. Dyson, shot fake, step back baseline from behind the backboard. He got it. Just a lot of tough finishes. I mean, that's one of those things where it's very hard to defend because in the back of your head, it's like he's not going to hit that. And then... Well, Deshaun Dyson has a, a history of pulling something out of nothing, especially on the offensive end for BCU. Lots of contact, no whistle, steal for Dyson. He looks for a long pass, goes two overhand, extra touch to the corner, three on the way, bang, from Zion. Now, if I'm serious, and I'm not, but I would start thinking, hey, let's get these guys who don't get a lot of time. Another turnover. Zion through the legs, oh! Well, if anything's gonna tell you that it's time to put some new fresh blood in, I think it's that, as Zach Chiotti gets the easy bucket on the other end. Tried for the uh, Harlem Globetrotters-esque spectacular. Under the leg, alley -oop. That's one of those, if they hit that, I mean, that's, they're never living that down, but yeah. still. Well, again, it's missing a dunk. You'd call it one of the most embarrassing feelings in basketball. Here's a free throw line jumper that rattles out. And it'll be BCU ball, last, last touch by Rose. But we saw this on Friday against Trinity College, and I was talking with Bryce, our SID, during halftime, and remember, he didn't really put the, the subs in until about the last five to 10 minutes, so he gave the starters time to work. Reggie Ward misses. McIntyre follows up. 
And, I mean, hey, that makes a lot of sense. If you're trying to win games, you want your best five guys to be in the zone, especially early in the season. You don't want dumb losses on your record going into March Madness and the uh, seeding for conference play uh, tournaments and such. Yeah, Dyson missed the three there. 72-41. Wildcats play their last non-D1 opponent of the year tonight at a block underneath by Reggie Ward. Nice pass right into the chest of Deshaun Dyson. That's beautiful ball movement there. And while we love to talk about Zion Harmon for his scoring, he really is a great passer of the ball. Yeah. I mean, if you've been watching this game closely, you just see him at a lot of opportunities. When you score a lot, people, ooh. Keati's pass is incomplete. Goes into the crowd looking for Fernandez. They've got the two small guards in there that really lit up the Wildcats from three in the middle of the first half. Yeah, so, I mean, go back to what was working before at this point. I mean, you're already down by a lot. Why not? You're, so, I mean, hopefully you're not looking to hit anymore. And <laughs> the, the, the scoreboard yeah. has gone out again. It happened right at the beginning of the game. Yeah, I think that even the scoreboard was a little bit astonished at that little miscue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the teams will head to the benches, and just as they do, the scoreboard pops back up. <laughs> That's got to be real awkward to be like, hey, guys, come in, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Wildcats will put in the miles in December. They'll go to South Carolina State, Purdue, Fort Wayne, Chicago State, UCF, and Mississippi State as their final five non-conference games. I mean, UCF's going to be a good, uh, good litmus test for where this uh, team is going to be, especially coming into later in the season. Sean Dyson lethal from the corner again. Speak Another triple. And speaking of later into the season, yeah, I mean, they're already playing like this. I understand. Oh, come on ah. now. Diego Fernandez from Beach Street. <laughs> he decided to just take one, I guess, and... I mean, I think he's showing up for you. I'm, I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to talk to him after the game and, and, uh, and get his thoughts. Harmon behind the back dribble left the floater short. Eagles on the run. Corner. Tra won't take the transition three, and maybe he should have because he's tied up, and that's going to be a BCU ball off the possession arrow. I mentioned Trinity Baptist have a couple of non-conference games left against Valdosta State, Jacksonville, and North Florida before they really start the meat of their NCCAA schedule. Mm. A lot of North Florida, a lot of South Georgia. I'm from up there, really, so it's real cool to hear Valdosta State's name. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you got, I mean, they are going to play a couple of those teams. Valdosta State, they get to Coa Falls in conference. Small town USA, essentially. And then a couple of, uh, of these other schools in conference, the Pensacola Christian, Coastal Georgia, Grace Christian, Tacoa Falls College, Johnson University of Florida, and another three falls for Trinity. Yeah. I mean, they're in the, uh, the Bible College NIT ch National Champions a couple times as well. So, yeah. I mean, they're real good with the Bible and the Word and playing basketball as well. Yeah. Well, this, the small Bible college NIT is a really cool tournament. It's hosted in West Virginia every year, and it's for uh, religious colleges with fewer than 3,000 on-campus students. That's a pretty small campus, but yeah. pretty big bucket there. For and another college. nice bucket for Trinity. Quick scoring run. 8-0 scoring run for Trinity Baptist as timeout called by Bethune-Cookman. But uh, Bob, a couple of other um, teams that they play also compete in that small college NIT. Trinity College is a, a two-time small college NIT national champion, as is Bob Jones, as is Pensacola Christian, as is uh, New College of Florida and Johnson. So they all go up there to West Virginia every year to compete. And it's good to, to give schools like that a chance for, for a national title. Yeah, especially considering, you know, you put those guys in March Madness, it's not even a fun competition. You might as well have just given them a plane ticket to wherever it's being hosted for a day and just kind of let it be done with it. But having those kind of smaller tournaments, especially for smaller colleges and universities, to give them something to look forward to at the end of the season, even if it's not the most prestigious thing or the most well-known, it still matters to the players. And it's just something to look forward to, something to push and strive towards. Wildcats up 77-49, but the Eagles have scored the last eight points. 
And we saw this in a little bit in the first half. The Wildcats kind of went to sleep for about five minutes and, and let the Eagles hang around. It's very interesting to watch these scoring runs from Trinity Baptist. Because if you look at it, like if it's like, oh, okay, they're on an 8-0 score run. It must be a little closer. And then you look back at the scoreboard, and by the time you look back up, BCU's back on like a 6-7 score run as well. So it's back in that main hole that they were already in. It's just consistency, right? That Trinity Baptist had a couple of these nice scoring runs, one in the first half, now this one in the second half. But the Wildcats have clamped down defensively. They've used their length to get more steals and make easy possessions to the other side. Trinity has attempted 37 field goals. BCU 66. That's almost double. I mean, if you're letting a team shoot that much on you, unless you're shooting that much as well, you're probably losing that game. It's not It's not even a question, really. But as we inbound back here. Still the A squad in for the Wildcats. Here's Damani McIntyre. Grabbed a couple of steals in the first half and picked up two fouls and went out. One of the worst and or best things for college basketball, college sports in general. Oh, oh a wow. deep three and Harmon stops the Trinity run. By himself there, but one of the worst things you can have or best things is a very quiet stadium because either you're losing by a lot or winning by a lot. So in this case, Cookman's winning by a lot. Students are still here, packed out really. But, you know, it's kind of like, okay, guys, let's start wrapping this up. I got places yeah, to go. Yeah, the Wildcats have tried to keep the crowd in it, like, but the, the through the legs off the backboard yeah. dunk and with a couple of deep threes. But, I mean, the, the BCU fans very knowledgeable about basketball, yeah. right? They, they know this one is, was, has been over for a long time, and they're yeah. just out there to get some experience. Especially after that, all the energy in the arena for the women's basketball game kind of going to a blowout. I, either, even if BC was also losing, even just going into a blowout after that is kind of like, okay. It's kind of the downturn. Yeah. At the end of the night, we're closing the shop. Well, I, it's good for me. I, I don't think my heart or voice could have uh, taken another close game like that. No, uh, another overtime game would have had you look at I mean, had us stressed up here. <laughs> Once we get into conference play, though, those, those are going to be some tough doubleheaders. Yep. Seneca Willoughby. Nice cross-court pass. Hetty steps into a triple. Jacoby Hetty up to 21 points. Harmon also with 21. Yeah, we, I mean, we're just scoring a lot. Scoring from wherever we've scored. I mean, if we look at a heat map, probably, we've scored from all over the court, essentially. So it's just very ooh, ooh. rough tumble there. Damani McIntyre just fighting for that ball. He is such a scrappy player. He loves to get in and poke those balls away. He'll rifle it to the post, and then Dyson barely saves that ball. Dyson kicks to the corner. It's another three on the way, and another three swished home by Jacoby Hetty. And a quick pass out for Trinity Baptist. They're, they're going to continue to run the floor. They're going to continue to play their offense, can try and get look for good shots. They're not going to stop oh. playing like here. Nice kick out three. Fernandez just a little bit too strong on that one. Wow. Oh, and then they tried the real long outlet pass in transition the other way, a three from Chiotti, and then Fernandez saves it on the baseline. Diego wow. skip pass and wide open is Brandon Hill. I mean, if you look at this uh, Trinity Baptist team, Fernandez is having a really good game. Chiotti's having a really good game. Like, if you're going, you know, you're going in the locker room, you're heading home, at least you can hold your head up high on that way back. Like, hey, I performed. Steal for Trinity Baptist. Rose. Chiotti under the basket. Not where he really wants to be. Only 5-9 against the 6-6, DeAndre Watson. You kind of see as he, when he went down and tried to get the ball, he just kind of stood there. He's like, I've accepted that I'm not scoring here unless I jump, uh, unless I grow a couple inches or something. Fernandez gets a screen, but nice defense by Ward to slide in. Now McIntyre switches on to him. Wildcats switching most interactions with the zone defense. Fernandez, pop a shot at the end of the shot clock. Needed to take that one, just comes up short. We've seen he can't hit those, though. Yeah. McIntyre thought about the three. Deshaun Dyson will have it, and it kicks off the front of the rim. 
Keandi and Fernandez both being shorter guys, a lot of very heavy underdog story for them probably throughout their basketball playing careers. And speaking of underdog stories, Cookman's playing fam in the Classic On coming Saturday, up. Saturday, Wildcats with a two-game winning streak after a big win against Alabama A&M last uh, Saturday. Yeah, on senior night as well. So Cookman's definitely trying to look to bring that momentum to stop FAMU, who's had a brilliant Another season. Another steal by Damani McIntyre. Skipping through is Seneca Willoughby, and he'll go to the free throw line. That's a tough foul to take for Seneca, as he'll be helped to his feet. Back on the Florida Classic, and I'm not saying the Wildcats are going to win the game, but we have been in every conference game we've played this year. We haven't lost a conference game by more than 10. Even when our early games of the season and against when the, like Memphis, yeah, we when, were when, in the game for yeah. most of it. When the, even when the, when the offense has not been having their rhythm, right? Yeah. When they were only scoring 10, 14 points, the defense keeps us in games. Now, Florida A&M probably has the best offense we've seen yeah. in conference all year, but we said that about Alabama A&M, and we held them to 14 points. So, I think there is a blueprint for success for the Wildcats on Saturday. If they can run the ball effectively, if they can shorten the game by taking time off the clock, and they play the defense that we know they can play, I think we might have a shot. Especially if they limit turnovers, given their defense is playing super well, but the worst thing you can have in turn when you have a, a defense play as good as we have is just causing turnovers, keeping them on the field too long, and then they get tired. And then a team like FAMU is definitely going to take advantage of those tired yeah. legs on defense. And that's the one thing the Wildcats have not done well this season. They, even though they scored 31 points against Alabama a and on Saturday, they turned the ball over five times and almost lost the game before they just powered through in the fourth quarter. So we will see. That's the Florida Blue Florida Classic. As always, it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Yes. Come on out to... Uh, Orlando. Orlando. Camping World Stadium. Don't just come for the game. It's the tailgate. It's the food. It's the Battle of the Bands on Friday night. It's it's a whole atmosphere that you need to experience at least once. Yeah. Very fun. I've been many a time. I've been I've actually been able to work some of the games more recently. And it's even even behind the scenes. It's a fun, happy environment. Everybody's just happy to be back around their alumni and alumnus and all that. Two shots for Seneca Willoughby as we return from the timeout. Willoughby, the sophomore from Philadelphia, and of course at Contra Costa College at the community college level last year in California. Yeah. He was the Northern California Freshman of the Year. And he gets one of two to fall. Wildcats not being great from the line tonight. Six of ten. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you're up by as much as they are up, you kind of allow yourself to not be as upset about that. But I doubt Theus is going to see it that way. Well, yeah, in closer games, in conference games, those free throw shooting woes could hurt you. Kiati, the outlet pass that time. A little triple threat action from Figuero there. Trying to look like a little Carmelo Anthony over there. Wildcats out in transition. Here's the freshman Dorsey passing it underneath to Ward. Nice soft touch. Every time we've seen Dorsey touch the ball, good things happen. I mean, hey, I know the competition, whatever, but at the end of the day, if a guy is balling like he's been playing, you got to keep him in there. Catch and shoot triple no good for Ian Kennedy. Well, uh, Dorsey doesn't take the wide open three. Guess who will, though? It's... Jacoby Hetty, and it's off the mark. Wildcats. Fernandez. Fernandez. Okay, Adi flashes through for the board. Shortest guy on the floor getting the rebound. Yeah, I mean. Nice pass out. Extra pass. Fernandez. Swish. And nobody closed down defensively for Bethune Cookman. I mean, Fernandez and Kiati have been going back and forth with their scoring lead, really. And to be fair to Kiati, his two rebounds this game, he's been in there. We've seen him down there, but, you know, when you're that short, it's very hard to consistently win rebounds. And when you've got the height advantage, you do that. Just yeah. float it into the paint for Ward and let him go to work. But nobody's guarding the back end. Oh. Fernandez almost had an impressive catch and lay it up, but left it short. Eagles down a man. Ward exploiting the mismatch. Hetty tried to tip it in, and the long rebound comes down to Dorsey. From the corner, no good. Another offensive rebound by the Wildcats. Willoughby in traffic. 
Dyson. Pass just back reset. To Willoughby with five, step back, long three. Oh, in and out, almost had it. And then they're gonna get oh, Ward yeah. for an over the back foul. I mean, Willoughby almost had a amazing little play there. Passes it off his own teammate by accident off of his leg back to him and trying to put it back up. But he reset, tried to get a better shot for the team. We start to see the bench coming in for Bethune Cookman here. Simeon Womack, the sophomore from Jacksonville. Nicknames. Nick Semi-automatic. One of my favorite nicknames. And I learned the other day from Eric Dennis, who's in basketball and athletics operations here for BCU, that he got that name because he is on the, when they run scout team, Simeon plays the, the shoot, top shooting guard for the other team as the Wildcats are going to get a shot clock violation. Mm. Oh no, the shot clock didn't reset, so it's going to be an inbounds for the Eagles. But uh, and he and he would ball out in practice. Good to see him getting some minutes here on the on the hardwood in a game action. Yeah, that's what you got to do when you're not getting those opportunities. You got to make a coach or make whoever like, hey, look at me. I'm playing. I'm trying my hardest. And if you're consistently showing it, at the end of the day, somebody's going to give you that opportunity. And it's, he's a guy that could come in and give you minutes down the stretch in games. Oh, Damani McIntyre, stop it! Another steal. Ward to the hoop and can't finish, but he will be fouled. We are at 20 steals. Bethune Cookman has only eight less steals than Trinity Baptist has assists this game. Ooh, now that's a stat. That's an absurd and stat. And remember, 23 steals last time out against Trinity College was a program record. They're three away from tying that and we got five with five minutes. minutes left. So we might be seeing another record breaker. So another Instagram post. I'm going to go back in my notes from last week and take a look at the things that Dan Ryan sent about scoring history at Bethune-Cookman in 100-plus point games. Mm. We're getting awfully close to having another one here. We're only eight points away, seven points away. Yeah, second <laughs> free throw goes in. And Ward comes back into the game. Oh. Kiati with a nice little touch pass and then points to the BCU bench. Not sure if you can be taunting down by almost 50. I mean, hey, you got to show him you're there, I guess. Monty McIntyre takes the three. He's not really one to shoot all that often. Willoughby tries to save the ball, and it goes off of him and out. I mean, once again, showing that hustle. Yeah, he didn't win that play, but it's good to see him still doing that, even what the score, how the score is. Seeing that kind of tenacity from your players got to make Theus a little happy. The redshirt freshman Jason Matthews out of Sacramento, California is into the game now for BCU as Keati will go to the line. A lot of Cali connections here. Yeah, Cali and Chicago. Jacoby Hetty, Deshaun Dyson, Reggie Ward, all from Chicago on this BCU team. And, of course, last year had a couple of other guys from Chicago as well. And that's because assistant coach Billy Garrett grew up and has a lot of connections in the Chicago area. He recruits that area very heavily. That's the other reason they're going up to play Chicago State in the non-conference. That game was a is going to be a rematch of the game played here last year. A game the Wildcats won. It's always good to have a rematch against a team that you've already beat. You already got that mentality. If we can do it again, you don't have to worry about like, oh man, you know, past mistakes and stuff. Willoughby now the. A guard on the floor, but he coughs that one up into his own bench. 4.21 to go, 93-58. Wildcats closing in on another steals record. Just one away from tying the record set last Friday. Yeah. Kiati's getting real chippy with the Cookman bench when that inbound pass, but it's kind of weird to see that when you're not really in the game that much. Rose can't get the finger roll. And then a pass is tipped off of the Wildcats and out. So what, BC has turned the ball over about three times in the last couple of minutes here. And as we see the main rotation not on the floor, a couple of bench guys playing, passing's gotten a little bit sloppy. Mm. But hey, if you're not playing them earlier in the game, they haven't gotten much playing time. So you gotta, you can't be super mad at, oh man, they didn't get that, you know, the passing isn't as tight as the guys who've been playing for around like 20, 30 minutes. 
Here's Aubrey Howard can't hit freshly into the game for Trinity Baptist. Wildcats running the floor. Uh, and Willoughby, Willoughby took the hard pass instead of the easy pass. He tried to hit McIntyre running the floor, which was the hard pass. He had the easy pass to the corner for Simeon Womack. We hit the final media timeout of the game. Wildcats up 9-358. We'll be right back after this. This is VCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network. Advertise with Wildcat Nation. BCU Athletics is offering sponsorship opportunities across the Cat Eye Network. For more information, reach out to Bethune Cookman Athletics Communications at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. Michael Trillo and Henson White carrying you down the stretch for this one. The Wildcats well in control up 93 to 58. But here's Diego Fernandez racing through and then turns the ball over. A story throughout this game has Simeon been. Simeon Womack turns the ball over. Both, neither team wants to keep the ball right now. Just kind of keep the ball in play almost. Just. And a three from the corner. That's Aubrey. Aubrey Howard. Only on the floor for a couple of minutes. As is Amir Hardy. Also into the game for Trinity as they Go with their bench as well. Simeon Womack wide open for three. Guess what? He's semi-automatic. <laughs> We've been waiting to use that one on we, the We have. So. Oh. Keandi with another tough attempt, tough layup there. but So the Wildcats on that last possession just tied the record of steals in a game at 23. And Damani McIntyre is tied for sixth in program history now. Seven steals in a game. He's got seven tonight. Jeez. I mean, he, if you've been watching, he's been in those passing lanes. He's been harassing people. And he game. may just increase his lead in the nation. Remember, he has the most steals of anybody in the country through two weeks of action in the college basketball scene. Yeah, I mean, if he keeps it going, you know, you're going to get start drawing like Gary Payton comparisons or something, but I didn't say that. Hey. <laughs> just statistical. <laughs> But Keandi on his second free throw. And he was really great last year, obviously, led the swack in steals, but he did get into a little bit of foul trouble. He's been better this year early on about not getting into that foul trouble. Simeon Womack for three again, no good. That comes off the head of an Eagles player. Womack gets it back, spins the lane, and scores. Another, another more points for Semi Automatic, so good day in the, good day in the broadcast booth. Kiati is just shucks up a triple. Long rebound for the Bethune Cookman. Womack behind the back. Skips through to the corner. Willoughby baseline. Up, up and, and under. under. No. Kiani has literally been just everywhere with yeah. for this. He's got, he's team. got a team high six rebounds as Womack playing hard dives in to try and get the steal. <laughs> and he tries to pull <laughs> Kiani back up. <laughs> Rag, Keani is ragdolled on the floor and he just, <laughs> just turns around and grabs his arm and just starts to pick him up from there. I know he's short, man, but I don't think that's how that's going to work. <laughs> Wildcats one bucket away from triple digits. 2.12 to go. And you're, just, you're just seeing the younger guys. we got Dorsey out there, the freshman, and some of the younger guys getting some work in. It's always nice to see... Uh, NBA level scoring from your college basketball teams, especially when you yeah. look at overall scores and you'll see like in the 80s and 70s. But when you can, whenever you can get into the triple digits in college, it's amazing. 
We might get there right now, and Jason Matthews can't get it. It's an offensive board for Willoughby into the corner. Womack drives, puts it off the glass, and you can tell the remaining fans at Moore Gymnasium love that one. We've been waiting for Got his own little Simeon to get a chance to shine as another turnover by Trinity College. Howard steps on the baseline. I mean, he's got a fun nickname. He's got a cool little look with the mouth guard. I mean, what else? Uh, I mean, what else is there, really? Wildcats still looking for one more steal to break the uh, record again. Low post. Nice position by Watson, plus one. <laughs> That's not really fair to Fernandez, who's just kind of there. I'm not sure how you get that matchup with the... Uh, Diego for the 5'8", Diego Fernandez, and the 6'8", Dondre Watson. I mean, that's what good ball movement will lead to. You're going to get stuck on a screen, or you get stuck trying to catch somebody in transition, and you're going to end up with a horrible mismatch. And Fernandez is just trying to at least look like he's playing defense and actually gets a foul call. So. I think he was just trying to get out of the way. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Wildcats have 103. 120 to go in the game. Let's see if they can get that, that steal. They seem to be looking for it. They do put some full court press on. Kiati steps into a 3-2 strong. I think he's taking almost all of their shots down this stretch, really. Womack, step back. And we're just playing out the last couple of minutes here. We've seen Robbie Simmons into the game for Trinity as we get the one minute warning. Fernandez flashes through. Kiati keeps it alive. We're looking for our buzzer beater here would be a, another steal. That's not it. Yeah, it's a just a, just a board. Willoughby to the basket. Oh, wow. He'll go to the line. Seneca Willoughby still playing hard even this late into the game. And that's one of those things where it's like, hey, that's awesome tenacity. You would love to see that as a fan, but at the same time as a coach, you're a little got to be a little concerned about, hey, this guy's flinging himself down there, like up this much. It's like, hey, we need to calm it down. I know we're trying to play hard. We're trying to play fast. We're trying to play loose. But at the same time, it's like. We need, with, this is the only the beginning of the season. Yeah. We don't want you getting injured halfway through or have a nagging injury that messes you up come conference time. Keanu's gonna come out for the last time. He's been impressive tonight, 22 points. Yeah. I mean, hey, he's, him and Fernandez played a really good game to be fair to them. I mean, if they weren't here, this game would look much, much worse. So you gotta give him, take your hat off to him as Cookman looks to get this final steal. 37 seconds left. Put back attempt. No. Third opportunity. Tie up. Now you can make an argument. It's going to be BCU ball off the possession here. I'm not sure that counts as a steal. I'm uh, not. I don't know. <laughs> Romo Tad reaching here. But, uh, I don't know. I, the, the stats people might put it in there just yeah. just to just to give us give us the record. <laughs> Just to get us the little edge up. <laughs> I mean, are BCU those? has closed well. 8-0 run over the last two minutes. Yeah. They might take that uh, missed, uh, that air ball early and try to put it on there as well. But, I mean, we've closed well here. Oh. Oh. That's a tough fall for Jason Matthews. He really? gets up and shakes it off. That's and he'll go to the thing. line for a one and one yeah, That's the last thing you really want to see at this point in the game is someone go down that hard. They did uh, not give a steal for that tie-up. Ah. Uh, I'm not in the stats. <laughs> <laughs> but you hope he's not that, not going to feel that, but I mean. Yeah, you can tell he's, his shoulder is yeah. he's feeling it. He's running, to, trying to get Fernandez. Oh. Oh, they don't get it. 16 seconds left. Fernandez dribbles in. 10 seconds left. They're, they go, look, they're oh. going for the steal. They know they won't get it, though. Three I'm, on the way. That's the offensive board. It goes to Trinity. They'll have 2.8 seconds to try and grab the inbounds pass. I mean, if, hey, if I'm if, if I'm on the court right now, I am trying my hardest here. They don't get the steal. The last shot won't go, and the, this one belongs to the maroon and gold. After all the pomp and circumstance of the first game, this one a bit anticlimactic, but the Wildcats still take their second straight win, 104 to 63. Very straightforward game for Cookman here. I mean, if I, if you're Theus, you look at this game, obviously very good defensive presence. If you look at the steals total at the end of this game, 
23 steals, one away from your record that you just broke. I mean, you cannot be mad at that. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of turnovers by our own uh, offense, a lot of you know missed opportunities from Trinity Christian to keep this uh, Trinity Baptist rather to keep this game closer. So I, on one hand, obviously very ecstatic about the win, a lot of points scored, very good defensive and offensive performance. But there is still a lot of stuff to work on. Here are your scoring totals from this evening. First for Trinity Baptist, Kiati had 22, Fernandez had 17. Those were the two guys that got it done for TBC. After that, a pretty steep drop off. Thompson and Rose had seven, Kennedy and Howard had three, Hill and Figueroa had two, and a whole host of people. Anderson, Spinelli, Hardy, Mossback, Simmons, and Quirth Loader played and did not score. Trinity Baptist shoots 37.7% from the floor, 23 of 61. For Bethune Cookman, Jacoby Hetty had 25 points to lead all scorers. Zion Harmon had 21. Deshaun Dyson, 15. Andre Watson, 15. And Reggie Ward, 14. Five players in double figures for the second game in a row. And Andre Watson grabbed a double double as his 10 rebounds led the Wildcats. Simeon Womack, in only six minutes of play, grabbed seven points. Seneca Willoughby had five. And Dorsey had two. Big stat tonight on a personal level is the seven steals for Bethune Cook when they tie a school record with 23 steals overall. McIntyre had seven, Hetty had five, Ward had three, a couple and, of others had two. Yeah. I mean, when you look at that stat, it's a very telling stat because not just, it's obvious, you know, seven sticks out, five sticks out. But when you get three, two, 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 that's so, that's so much team effort to go into getting those steals and just keeping pressure on the ball. I mean, it's extremely hard to get into an offensive flow when you're losing the ball, all, all of these possessions and all this pressure on you. So, I mean, 14 turnovers is not the best, but obviously when the other team has 30, it's kind of obvious that you're doing something right. But once again, if you look at that steal stat, 23, I mean, total of nine assists for that second half. So, yeah. Uh, Wildcats shot 41 of 85. That's 48% for the floor. 33.3% from three, which is right on the yep. average of where you want to be. Um, Jacoby Hetty, five of nine from beyond the arc. A standout performance from him. Three of eight for Zion Harmon. Three of 11 for Deshaun Dyson. Here are some team stats for you. Bethune-Cookman only out-rebounded Trinity by seven, 47 to 40, but 16 to eight doubled him up on the offensive glass. Uh, 21 assists for BCU, just nine, as you mentioned, for Trinity. Mm. Uh, Trinity turned the ball over 30 times, 23 of those steals. BCU just turned the ball over 12 times. Two blocks to one in favor of BCU. Fast break points, 34 for the Wildcats. Uh, points off turnovers, 44 for Bethune-Cookman, just seven for the Eagles. 52 points in the paint to 24 for BCU. Second chance points, 12 to seven in favor of the Wildcats. Uh, they actually... Uh, had more fouls, the Eagles did, than BCU 16-14. But that's one area that the world thoughts before we sign off here, uh, Hanson. I mean, it's obvious. It's always nice to call somebody out and then they actually prove you right. So J Jacob Hetty having a great game. Uh, obviously, Trinity Baptist. I mean, yeah, Trinity Baptist. I'm getting all the Trinities mixed up. We should have played another Trinity, had three of those. <laughs> but, I mean, decent game out of them, to be fair, to their you know star players in Ke uh, Keandi and uh Fernandez, but otherwise, just you can't you can't play like that and expect to win a basketball game. You can't have more ste steals given up than assists and expect to win a basketball game at any level. But BCU played extremely well. Just got to clean up the fouls. Got to be more consistent defensively. But and then maybe some more bench action and more scoring out of the bench. Obviously, some injuries have hampered the ability of uh, Cookman to really rotate and see what they got. But otherwise. Stream a good game. That'll do it for us here. Once again, your final score, 104-63. The Wildcats straight triple digits for the second game running and close out their non-D1 schedule with two wins over Trinity College and Trinity Baptist. For Cattle Network, director Eugene Robinson, producer Darian McCaskill, SID's Bryce Wynoski and Brian Harvey, my co-commentator Henson White. My name is Michael Torello. Thank you so much for watching, and hail Wildcats. <laughs>